Hello, I'm Sophia Smith. Welcome to Masters of Inspiration. Great people doing great things. Today we welcome Seymour Knox IV. Hi, Seymour. Hi, Sophia. It's great to be here. Seymour, the Knox family is known in our community and beyond. But tell us about your family history. Well, Sophia, we were, we've been very, very blessed. My uh, great-grandfather was uh, an entrepreneur, and he started the, uh, the sort of the five and ten cent uh, industry. Um, he had a chain of five and ten cent stores um, across the Northeast, uh, Buffalo, Toronto, Utica, uh, Wilkes-Barre, and uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, called S.H. Knox and & Company. And his cousin was Frank Woolworth, and in the early... Uh, Teens, they, there were a couple of other um, people that also had stores. They all had a meeting in New York, and they merged all the companies and stores together, and they ended okay. up having this huge chain, and it was called F.W. Woolworth, and it's gone through a number of um, reiterations. It was Benatar, and now it's uh, known as Foot Locker. Seymour, who helped you shape your values, and which values would you say are most important to you? Well, I think having... Uh, Probably my dad and my mom um, and my grandparents, and I think the strongest values that you can have um, last you a lifetime. And so I, I try to be very strong ethically, and I have certain lines in my mind that I try not to cross. Okay. And do you have discussions about that with your own children, or it's more like just a known family tradition? I think that there, we have moments where we, you know, at, I have two boys, I don't know if, you, if you're aware of that, and they're 22 and, and 19, and so they're coming into different ages and different situations right. that are different than what you have at 9 and 10 or 14 and 15, right. and um, they're both in college now, so they're getting to see a variety of different types of situations, and I think that particularly in male-female um, experiences, there's certain lines that are out there. Right. That's the joy of being a parent, of course. <laughs> um, of all the places you could have lived, why did you choose Buffalo? Well, uh, Sophia, I was very, very blessed. I had lived in New York. I'd lived in uh, Chicago, uh, Boston, Montreal, and Toronto. And unfortunately, my, we had an uh, illness in our family. My uncle had colon cancer, and my dad called at that time and asked if I wanted to get into the hockey business and move from Boston and start with the Sabres organization. Well, it was in your blood, so it was, my, you it was in my blood, but I'd, I'd right. had a um, sort of a television background uh, prior to that. I was involved with the startup of New England Sports Network at that time, which was a huge deal. Right. And to be able to leave that, leave that and come into um, the sports world, which you know it had been in my blood for many years, was a big challenge. And at the right. time. Um, you know, it was, it was upsetting, but as uh, things got along further, um, it turned into a great opportunity, and it, and it was a great vocation for many, wow. many years. That sounds like fun. How do your personality and values make you a good fit for Western New York? Well, I think from my sports background, I was blessed to uh, meet a number of wonderful people doing great things here in our community. And beyond, and I've had a, an innate um, ability to uh, connect and ferret out situations so that I can match up with other people. Okay. Seymour, community and community involvement is very important to you. Why? Well, it's a great way, you know, as I said earlier, we've been very, very blessed, and it's a great way of giving back. And one of my favorite Sabre stories, um, which I'll share with you, uh, was we did we donated lots of items for golf outings and those types of things. And I had a guy in, in Olea, New York, who'd won an autograph stick one time. And uh, it was getting to be late August, and we had, you know, the players were coming in in September. We were going to have, you know, more sticks signed and autographs and going out for, gearing up for the uh, season. And I called this, uh, we'll call him Joe, just for simplicity. And I called Joe up, and they said, well, Joe's actually in Buffalo this week. And I said, oh, that's great. I can finally get him a stick. I was so excited you know, to finally get it out of my office. And Joe, ironically, was over at Roswell, and had just had his leg amputated. Oh, no. 
And um, I had brought a Sabres jersey with me um, to give him the stick, and I gave him the stick. And we, we spent about an hour together just chatting. And about three weeks later, I got a um, letter in the mail from Joe's wife saying that Joe had passed away and he got buried in his Sabre jersey I'd given him. Wow. And those are the types of impacts that you can have in a community on the sports side that a lot of people don't see. They right. don't necessarily know, but they're the moments that you sort of treasure in your heart knowing that you did Absolutely. have a little impact on somebody. Yes, it's a really heartwarming story. Seymour, it would be wrong to say that you are focused on just a single industry. So if you were giving a college commencement speech, what would your message be? Well, actually, um, I had the opportunity to give a college speech last year with Bryant and Stratton College okay. with um, one of your up and coming guests, Darius Pridgen. All right. And um, I talked about living your life uh, very vibrantly and to try and take in as much as you can because you only come around once. And I think it's very important to not live a sort of a, a black and white life, so to speak. Carpe um, diem. Seize the seizing day. Seizing the day. Yes. And there's so much that you, that you see. There's so much that you come across uh, in terms of um, opportunities. The, the, actually, the hardest part at the end of the day is making up your mind as to which one you really want to seize and go with That's and right. run with. That's true. Entrepreneurs are creative and self-motivated. Would you say that's innate? I think it's, for me, it's innate. Okay. For others, um, they may not have that same, same ability, but it's because of my, my background and what I've been able to do, I see a lot and I'm able to do a lot of different things, and it's, it's been great. Okay. Seymour, what should be done to capitalize on the positive and fix the negative regarding the youth today? Well, I think it's a, that it's important for kids to be able to have an outlet, and that's in a lot. It can take place in a lot of different areas. Um, certainly, sports is a good outlet, but also I think it's important for kids to have friends or older people that they can go to as mentors to help them in some of the challenges that they have, um, not only with work but in uh, social situations or uh, boy-girl situations. Um, how things are handled, that type of thing. Absolutely. Cer certainly on the business side. Seymour, you have served on the board of the Albright Knox for 20 years. Wow, that's quite a legacy. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the modern and progressive things they're doing there, including the Music as Art Festival? Well, the Music of Art Festival, Sophia, has been a, a great addition. I think we've been doing it the last five years. Uh, Robbie Tikas um, from the Goo Goo Dolls, actually we were in a studio today uh, to, taping that's right. the show. Uh, which has been very generous of him. Uh, Definitely, it's beautiful. Has put the, put the program together and it really showcases local music and um, the up and coming artists and some of his friends. And as I mentioned, it's been going on for close to five years and it's been a great addition for the gallery in the uh, September timeframe. We've also had a very progressive jazz series for close to 20 years. Um, the Buffalo News has sponsored for many years our outdoor summer jazz festival and it's on the back of the gallery over the steps right. and that takes place every Sunday pretty really much. Really exciting and just always something fun and new and exciting going on there which is a great way just to get new people in the museum and young people in the museum. Really great work. Well the young people are actually the future of, of the museum so it's we have a, a program that was put together with uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield with uh, Alfonso O'Neill White and he sponsored, the program's called Art School, and he's provided busing for every third grader in Western New York to come to the gallery. That's really excellent. I mean, people that would never have the opportunity to be exposed to art or hands-on art like that. It's just great, great things going on there. And we have a wonderful person, uh, Lindsey Kranz, who, who um, coordinates all of that. And it's really fun. Sometimes I'll pop over to the gallery and I'll pop in on a tour with the kids and they have no idea who I am. Right. And is... uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to see the enthusiasm of all the kids, especially looking at the sculptures and the paintings and asking them questions about where they were. Actually, Lewis uh, had come down from Toronto as a kid um, I to go tour the gallery. I remember hearing that story, yes. And he was so inspired that that's what that inspired his whole life and changed his career. Uh, we also have adult classes. We've got kids' classes. We do yoga at the gallery. Oh, yoga at the gallery. So many things going yeah, on. Yeah, so there's a lot of things. Tell us about the adult classes. I've seen the, the kids' classes, but... Well, uh, adults can go and they can take a painting class. 
rudimentary painting rudimentary, or and we have, you don't have to be an expert to start out there? No. <laughs> okay, that's hopeful for me then. <laughs> we, can get, we can get the uh, finger paints out. Okay, I like that. That's, that's right up my alley. What do you do to recharge, to gain momentum, introspection, and just change your view? Well, actually, one of, the, one of my favorite things to do, believe it or not, uh, in our region, we're, we're blessed we have uh, Knox Farm State Park here, and for many years that was our family home. Of course. So it's nice to be able to, to go out there and recharge and go for a walk through the woods or go by the ponds. And then I love going to Niagara Falls and hanging out by Goat Island. And uh, it's a very, very powerful place spiritually. And you, when you look to the left, you think that nothing has really changed in our world for a million years. And then you go and take a look to the right, right across the heart of the falls, and then you see all the, you know, the casinos and, and everything else. If I'm really lucky, I get to go fly fishing a couple times a year, and that really recharges me. Okay. So. That sounds like fun, Seymour. <laughs> we started by introducing your family history. Where is the next generation of the Knox family members taking the name and your legacy? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, I, I hope that my kids will have plenty of seeds to drop along the way. And, um, you know, they're not married yet. They don't have, I don't think they have girlfriends. They may have girlfriends, I'm not really sure. But um, they're still in college, and I think uh, one of them is here at Canisius, and he's, he's getting a great education. The other one's at school outside of Chicago, and he's getting a great education. And they're also getting a lot of uh, interesting life experiences with mom and dad. That's very important, and you will both cherish those memories forever. So. That's excellent. At Masters of Inspiration, we want to inspire and motivate and talk about giving back to our community. But we live in Buffalo, and obviously we have some downtrodden people. And I just wanted to know, what do you do to give people hope or inspire people in our community? Well, I think a great way to get inspired is to volunteer, um, believe it or not. Absolutely. And no matter how bad your, your day is, depending on where you go, like if you go to Roswell, you go to Children's, you're going to see some situations that um, aren't really so great for right. things that are going on. I, had a, uh, I was at a lunch on Wednesday, and um, there was a pastor actually at the lunch, and he'd been going to um, this person's house to, um, to see the daughter was hit by a car. And she's 13 years old. Right. And her life was uh, actually snuffed out this morning. She, she passed away. I'm so sorry. And you sort of wonder about what can happen, you know, and what would have happened in a kid's life. But the parents were so thankful that this man had taken, who didn't know them at all, had taken the time out of his life at the church for three days to come over and spend the entire day with the family, just being with them. And, praying. That's beautiful. And I think with what happens in western New York, you know, you can be inspired by a beautiful sunset or a beautiful sunrise. You might meet somebody on the street or at a party that can change your entire life, just like that. And those type of uh, serendipitous moments are there for everybody. And I don't think that, well, what I really meant to say is I think that Everybody has something to offer to anybody, That's whether true. it's um, inspiration or motivation or a story that they can share. And it's up to you to figure out what comes out of that story that can help inspire you to do a better job in your own life. Seymour, thank you so much for joining us on Masters of Inspiration today. You truly are an inspiration to the entire community and beyond. Thank you.